Hi. So I'm Blitz. Some of you may have like heard me chatting around in chill studios or just been around me. Um, before I get into this video, I would just like to mention how this won't necessarily be a tutorial in some aspects, but more of like an in-depth explanation as to how this build works and all that stuff. Purpose of this is like mostly for the past tutorials and other tutorials from other YouTubers, I've noticed how easy mistakes can lead to the overall outcome to not work at all, ever. And that makes it extremely hard for me to like help the community or anyone who does the tutorial for like any issues because of the amount of bugs that can happen. So let's get into the video. Alright, so this is build a boats first ever mouse controlled plane as far as I know. Maybe you probably came from Reddit because you saw the video and you saw I was going to make a video on YouTube about this. But um, before I get started on how this completely works, um, I'd like to mention that this was not be by me alone. Uh, I had help from two other friends in game. That being Triska2 and Bones. Um, Tris, he was like our dummy pilot. So like every time I needed help on like testing it and seeing what was going on, he was always there to just try flying it and stuff. And then Bones was always, well, I started out using um, different stuff for this and Bones suggested doing different things and that worked out. So yeah. But overall, I did make this entire mechanic and kept bug fixing until it worked. So, the whole start of this came from just thinking of making a mouse controlled something. Obviously, um, I've done other videos before, so I was thinking, hey, why not try a plane? Because I've tried it just using servers and stuff before, but it doesn't work out that well. So, I thought, why not make a mouse control using a turret? So, I started off with that. As most people do, I connected a hinge to the turret, like so, and thought, oh, this will work fine, perfectly. Worked just good, but there's delay. And now that wasn't the only issue. After sitting in the turret for a bit of time, the hinge would freeze because the player would desync the hinge, like so. Since there's no player register nearby the hinge, it wouldn't render its physics, meaning it won't move ever. It won't move until I hop out the turret. So instead of having someone sit in the plane during the whole ride, right, needing it all just to fly it, I need to find a different way. Thankfully, before I started working on this build, my friend Pultic made a technique on doing boat motor animations if you've seen in show studios and to do that you attach a harpoon to the back of the turbine where it spins then you place a chair and that lets you connect to it now that um not only works on boat motors but works on pretty much everything like turrets obviously as i need to but any collide off part of a pre made block, so servo, etc. The way it works is when you harpoon something, the harpoon will weld on to said block. So if I unanchor this, we'll see the harpoon moves with it. It's instant, no delay, no nothing. And it won't freeze because it's not connected through physics. It's actually welded as a block. Now, many of you know, how do you connect that block? Because obviously if I do this, it'll fall off. What we found, well, what he found, is that if you place a seat onto the harpoon, as you can see, it's connected. Other blocks work as well, such as dynamite, but the seat is relatively the best we found. Um, if you do this, you can connect blocks to it, and then you can just build off from the seat. So if I get a block such as a hinge, 
or just like plastic. Connected. No delay, no nothing. And that is the overall gist of being able to connect the turret to the rest of the plane. Now, the second part of the plane was turning left and right. Now, I didn't want it to fly like plane seats where if you just do A and D or rotate like so, because that's unrealistic. So, what I thought was, hey, what if I rotate the turret side to side, and these, if they go up and down, it can rotate me in a circle. And then I can just use my lift to then go in that direction. I started off doing this using UV joints, which if you don't know, you can look them up or you can see the picture on the screen. UV joints work, but they're really finicky and they can actually like decrease the output speed and just be overall like bad. So uh, what Bones told me to do is maybe try doing CV joints. The CV joints are right here. They're big chunky things in the build because they're using springs and you can't really, you know, change the size of it. As well as I can't have these hinges touch and all that stuff. CV joints have the same purpose as a UV joint, but they just make your rotation opposite, which I needed, and they can go 90 degrees and just work overall better in terms of not being finicky and all that stuff. So when I, ma I made it so that when I rotate side to side with this piece connected right here to this wooden part, this wooden part would rotate side to side. Now this is attached to a rope. This rope is attached to these points. These points will then rotate right here, which then will transfer the rotation to each output, but reverse it. That is good because I want it so that, you know, this one will be opposite than this one. This one will be opposite than that one. So I connected them. And now when I turn right in the turret, this, thing, this part right here will go down. This one will go up. Overall, leading me to tilt sideways to the right, and then I can go use my lift to turn right, and vice versa. So if I turn left, this will go up, this will go down, so then I can turn left. Then, the back of this is also using CV joints. So I needed to convert the up and down movement of the turret using this part right here. So you can see I connected it. And then I got rid of the side to side movement using this hinge and made it so it only transfers the up and down movement using this hinge. And that hinge is connected to the rope, which connects it to the CV joints. These CV joints connect to the turbine. Now, um, CV joints obviously reverse, which I needed because if I go up, instead of having the tur well, instead of having the turbine go up, because that would bring me to go down, I need the turbine to face downwards, which is the opposite. So what I did is I connected it to a CV joint, but CV joints lead it to be um, the, you know, direction to be rotated. So this will be rotating, but then this will be rotating, which is not the axis I want to be rotated. So then I had to connect it to another CV joint to then put the uh, rotation axis on the correct axis, but still have it be reversed. And that is the overall gist of the entire plane really simple yet looks extremely complicated but something you may notice right now this part right here right so the whole purpose of this tiny little contraption right here inside the build is probably not what you think so when I first started testing this I found out that when I was inside the turret instead of moving these mechanical parts around it moved the plane around, which I can't have, obviously, because then I can't fly it. So, what I had to do is find a way to prioritize what rotates and what doesn't. So what I did is I put a rope attached to hinges on the ground, so in the game we'll prioritize not rotating this plane, but we'll rather uh, prioritize rotating the mechanical parts than then rotate the turbines. The entire setup of this thing is just activating my harpoons and then adding on the seats but 
I also do a balloon because then having less weight just overall makes it easier for other stuff. But also, I started off trying to make this plane using thrusters, which ultimately didn't work out, if you couldn't tell. And that's why I need to get rid of weight. But since we don't need that, I can just do this. Now, I make everything invisible besides the um, turbines and the actual plane part because the way the turbine works is it'll lock on to any part in front of you. Like, so if I'm looking inside the camera and put my turret on a block in front of me, that'll have a different angle than just putting my mouse out and having it point out into a space beyond in front of me. Um, this can lead to issues because if the part's really close, that can overall just ruin everything and just make everything break. So what I do to be safe is make everything transparent. And the only things I have transparent, really, is this and this, obviously. And then I just unanchor everything. And boom, the plane's falling. Now I need to quickly do this. I need collision this on because I accidentally didn't. And now I'm going to add a switch for my turbines. And that is the entire plane, basically. So get in, boom. And then I can fly. The, the plane is still very buggy, as you can just tell right there from what just happened. It's really buggy because um, the game will randomly register your turret as facing backwards, which will just break it entirely. I do not know a fix for this yet, but when I do, I'll let you guys know, probably. And then another th big thing is currently uh, the high speed we've been able to get to work is 50 speed on jets. We haven't tested we haven't tested 100 speed yet because I have to switch to red jets and I'm too lazy to. But I know for sure that 200 speed jets do not work because it just glitches out and tries to go backwards and forwards constantly from the turbines flipping. That is the entire plane. It's extremely simple compared to what you probably thought it was. And that's why I kind of like it. It looks extremely complicated, but it is actually the simplest thing ever. And many of you, if you understand what is going on and look up how certain things work, you can figure out how to build this on your own. Without that, without further ado, I'd like to say goodbye 